Hi, welcome to this um, ProAct Living and Working Abroad webinar. It's live webinar where we're featuring um, the due dates and deadlines for the rest of 2020. It's been such a wonderful year, full of uh, change and challenge, that uh, we just want to try and refocus on what we need to do for the rest of the year. This is the less, last regular uh, webinar uh, on Facebook. We're moving to a new online forum which will be more interactive for clients and you need to register at our website at projectpartnership.com um, to, to register for the next webinar uh, which will be live in a slightly different way. Uh, so let, let's start and look at some of the deadlines that are looming. One of the things that we might have forgot w was Brexit because Brexit is coming up. Now, Brexit doesn't affect you if you live in your country and don't move across the borders and don't trade across the borders. This is therefore going to affect every expat. So UK expats who want to have any sort of um, EU residency must establish that residency before the end of 2020 uh, to get their residency based upon the EU citizen rules. After that date, it doesn't mean that you can never enter those countries ever again. It just means that you will have to do it as a non-EU citizen, as if you were Chinese, Indian, uh, South African, um, in theory. Now, different countries make different rules, and we don't know what those new rules are yet. More of that later in, the, in, in this webinar. So if, if you have an ambition to be living and working abroad in an EU country, including the UK, uh, up until the end of December, you must establish that residence uh, before that date so that we can then uh, live and work abroad in that country with our family for the rest of the, your lives. Your family don't have to be living and working abroad by the end of December, but you do, or, or one of the family members. So uh, that could be that uh, what that means is you have to have somewhere that you're renting or that you own to live in or that you're staying with friends but it's permanently basis and have your income sorted out whether that's work or whether it's uh, starting your own business so just remember that as an EU citizen uh, can go to the UK and start work straight away the new laws in the UK from January 2021 only certain um, a trades will be allowed to come in automatically so you'll have to get your working visa based upon your skill set and, and what's deemed to be a, a skilled and necessary job and the income uh, levels that you have to earn are quite high as well so just have, you need to bear that in mind if you want to relocate to the UK after the end of this year the um, for, for the EU it's a similar sort of basis that there'll be different requirements so a non-EU citizen has to form a company or have a contract of employment before they can get their residency visa so the world is much simpler as an EU citizen if the UK if if the expat wants to do that before then any uh, EU or UK citizen already resident abroad then has certain other things that they need to take into consideration and those deadlines are looming as well. Now, definitely from the UK perspective, there'd be potentially six months to get these things updated. And that should generally be the case in Cyprus and other EU countries, but that may, may change. Uh, but once you are a resident, uh, if you're working, you can register for social insurance, um, and that will give you entitlement to medical care and welfare benefits under the rules of that country. Now there might be qualifying periods and each country is different and you need to be aware of what those are and whether you will have medical cover continually through the period. Again, more of the deadlines of that later, but the EU uh, social insurance agreements, technically the, the UK leaves that when it, when it left the EU. So at the end of the transition period, at the end of December, the UK is no longer part of that. They've said that they want to carry on with that. They offer that uh, reciprocal social insurance agreements with other countries um, uh, and they want to maintain that system, but they need to make a new agreement either with the EU 
or with individual countries within the EU. The individual countries are not going to make an agreement until there's an EU settlement. And again, more of that later. Um, but that is something to bear in mind that you might need private medical cover. If you're driving, an EU expat can drive on the driving license of his home country or his adopted country. There's, there's no compa compulsion to change that driving license. Uh, if you're living and working abroad, you, you then have to change your, uh, after Brexit, uh, a UK expat will have to change their driving license within six months. Similarly in the EU. So if you uh, do that now as an EU citizen, there's no requirement. If you change your British to a Cyprus driving license, there's no need to do a test. If you change your um, a Spanish driving license to a British driving license, you don't have to do the test, uh, the, the driving test. But uh, international uh, non-EU citizens would. So if uh, an expat is living and working as a permanent resident or citizen in in an EU country like Cyprus after a Brexit day there will come a point that the within six months that they'll have to change their driving license to still be legal in in Cyprus and after Brexit they will need a test now each country will specify any concessions or, or rules or changes but basically the rules are change your driving license to EU rules as an automatic process without an additional test or wait to, to have to do a, an additional test later on. Um, <clears throat> the medical cover that expats get under the S1 agreement it is not, it, it will not continue if the UK doesn't have a bilateral treaty with the EU for social insurance agreements or with other countries. For Cyprus uh, and the UK, that there is a social insurance agreement that predates the EU back to 1957, but this doesn't include medical care. So medical care is, is a big issue uh, for expats that are not working in their, in their new country. So if you're working, paying social insurance or national insurance, you become entitled to medical cover, welfare benefits, uh, in, in time, depending upon the rules of the individual country. Uh, but if you're not working and dependent upon S1s or EHIC cards, then we're waiting for clarity on that rules e even today. And that's something that's going to be sorted between October and December this year. Um, the, as far as deadlines for Brexit are concerned, it's all been lost a bit with the COVID crisis and, and the war on that. But what we, what we do know is that there's a, an EU summit in October and this is the last effective chance they've got for the summit leaders to make an agreement. Now we've seen all this uh, hot air before and they've called special meetings and special meetings to get everything ratified. But in theory, uh, by the middle of October, the 17th of October, when the EU summit happens, uh, the UK and the EU should have uh, agreements in place for uh, trade deals, for uh, customs agreements, um, for social insurance agreements and for medical sharing. Um, and if not, um, or after that time, we could then move forward once the agreement is made between the UK and the EU, those agreements are ratified, um, bilateral agreements can then be made and put in place and expats can have clarity to know that they're going to be covered uh, for social and, and healthcare benefits on a cross-border basis if they weren't working before. So between October and December we should finally have some clarity on that. Um, and, and, and that's something that, that that's quite important to watch out for. And just bear in mind that you may need private medical cover. Uh, new expats coming out to a country might not qualify, even with social insurance, for healthcare straight away. So there may be a need for private medical insurance for, the, for that first uh, year or two. Um, so that those are the key uh, Brexit deadlines 
for the end of this year given that there'll still be six months to mop things up afterwards but if you want to relocate under EU rules, a UK expat needs to relocate by the end of December and an EU expat needs to relocate into the UK by the end of December. If you want any help or advice on that, uh, contact us at our website projectpartnership.com and uh, register for the uh, Living and Working Abroad webinars uh, on the website that are coming up in the autumn which will be doing a deep dive on these specific issues as we get clarity on them for, for expats um, in, in the coming months. Uh, the other deadlines that are coming up, and again, they've been exacerbated by Corona, are to do with tax. So there's a lot of tax issues that are going on at the moment. Um, the tax issues that um, are, are fun and laughter. So here in Cyprus, we've got a, a particular issue that uh, online uh, deadline for 2019 full year returns has been put back to the 30th of October and still um, in the middle of August we still can't do those returns so the tax office have confirmed that the deadline is still the end of October but there's no physical way of doing that online return at this point in time but expats uh, as taxpayers in Cyprus need to bear in mind that with that return due by the end of October, any balancing tax that needs to be paid by the end of October 2020. Um, having, having that in mind, uh, if you're a taxpayer in Cyprus, you should be paying your tax on a self-assessment basis anyway. So the rules have changed and gone backwards and forwards a few times over the last few years, but the rules are actually enforced as they, as they truly are this year and you should pay half your tax uh, half your self-estimated tax in the summer in July and half in December so if you didn't pay any in July there's no no way of paying that 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 first installment of tax that there is no method of paying tax for that on self-assessment in Cyprus at the moment what you can do is with the when self-assessment becomes available again in December, you can make a second instalment um, and make a payment to catch up your 2020 tax. Then, anybody that doesn't pay their tax on self-assessment during the year, when they do do the final return, is liable to late uh, payment penalties um, uh, when they finally get the assessment from the Cyprus Tax Office. So the, the, the deadline says that December for the self-assessed 2020 tax to pay in, in Cyprus. Um, in the UK, um, online tax returns have been available for a much longer period of time. The online tax return for uh, to the year to 5th of April 2020 is due by the 31st of January next year. However, you can still do a paper return in the UK, unlike Cyprus, and that return is, is due by the end of October. So expats need to get it in the post uh, probably by the uh, beginning of October to make sure that there's no undue delay for, for that return. No extension been given for paper returns if, if that's what you're making. Uh, another consideration that expats have got mm. with COVID crisis and lots of jobs and work patterns and lifestyles are changing and many expats are considering relocating to the UK. So uh, once you get into October this year there's less than six months left in the next tax year and so you could consider about going back into the UK and not being um, a tax client for the whole of the year if you qualify for split year treatment. So uh, now it's not always a given it's something that's available under double taxation treaties and if you qualify for split year treatment it can work quite effectively for you so you could earn 80,000 uh, working abroad uh, between uh, April and September uh, go back to the UK in, in October uh, apply successfully for split year treatment and only be taxed in the UK from October on, on October's income, whereas the previous six months 
the 80,000 earned abroad is still treated as, as non-resident. Now to qualify for split year treatment, there, there are certain rules and conditions connected to your ties, connected to how many years you've been non-resident. And if you've got any doubt or concern, then you need to uh, contact us and we'll offer you a free review to discuss that and, and, and guide you on that. Um, product also have a, a retainer service for expats living and working abroad. We can give you guidance as we go along on, on, on the tax issues as you are relocating from the UK or, or into the UK. So we'll give you guidance, our retainer service makes our uh, ProEx expat experts available to you by email and free review on a regular basis. The, um, so that's a summary of the, of, of the uh, deadlines and um, the issues and the outstanding issues that we still have this year. And so we've got uncertainty around tax returns in Cyprus, we've got uncertainty around Brexit um, and there's many things to put into our diary and keep considering. We'll be covering those on a regular basis with our online webinars so take a look out for that and please join us and we want to make those a more interactive session where we can field your questions actually on online. They are free um, but obviously available to our retained clients as well as to other customers but uh, if you want to find out more about your issues contact us at productpartnership.com and we'll, we'll happily organise a free review with one of our advisors in the coming uh, few days.